Hello, I'm Drew and I make stuff. One of the more recent things I've made was a fix to my filament problem. Specifically, my filament was absorbing too much moisture, causing many different issues such as brittleness, poor layer adhesion, stringing, and inconsistent layering. Originally, I was storing my filament in Ziploc bags with silica packets. This worked out okay at first, but over time, bags would leak and silica would saturate without me knowing. So I ended up just baking my filament in the oven. After doing some research, I learned about decadent beads, which are tiny beads that collect moisture from the air. These guys right here. I went and got a storage bin with a gasket sealed top. The seal is the most important thing of a bin, as you want to keep it as airtight as possible. Originally, I was using an IKEA bin, but then I realized there was not an easy way to make an airtight seal. I then ordered some decadent from Amazon and worked on designing a box to hold the decadent. When coming up with the design, I wanted something with a large surface area so the decadent could work efficiently. The height of the boxes took a little bit of math to figure out and did end up getting it wrong on the first attempt. You see, not all the decadent fits in the box. For the math itself, I calculated the volume of the cylinder by using this formula. Measuring the height of the diameter of the container, then dividing it by two to get the volume needed for one box. Since I have the length and width of the boxes, I now know the volume. I can use some algebra to get the height of the box. When I originally did the math, I used a hollow cylinder formula for the cylinder volume and also calculated the box as a whole instead of the internal volume. With these calculations done, I could start designing the box itself. I have been using Fusion 360, but there are a lot of good FreeCAD programs out there. First, I started the origin plane and started a new sketch. Using the rectangle tool, I quickly sketched out the perimeter of the box, added some constraints to the sides of the box to get the correct dimensions, and clicked in it. Next, I extruded the box to the desired height. Then I used the Dell feature to hollow out the interior of the box. I went with 4mm for the thickness of the walls, keeping the lid of the box in mind. To make the holes for the lid, I first had to start sketching the lip of the box, and then used the offset tool to create an uniform hole all the way around the box. Using constraints to set the width of the hole again, keeping in mind the lid, will need to fit into the hole and be printable, so the hole will not be too small. Once done, I click finish on the sketch. From here, I did another extrude, but this time changed the settings to create a hole in the lip of the box. I went with an even 4.4mm as I did not want something too deep or too shallow. With the bottom of the box looking good, I exported the model to see how it would look in my slicer. At first I thought I did the map wrong, making the box way too big to fit on the plate. Eventually I realized the slicer was using Ender 2 as a printer instead of Ender 3. Changing to the correct printer, I could from the bottom of the box fit perfectly on the bed, and I could begin working on the lid. To start, I created another sketch using the perimeter of the box as a base. Then I imported the hole into the sketch and used that to create an offset of 1.65 millimeters for the lip lid. With the sketch finished, I created another extrude, this time making sure to uncheck the join checkbox, creating a new part. I extruded downward by 4 millimeters, offset slightly from the deepness of the hole I made earlier. Another sketch is required, using the perimeter of the lip as a sketch base. I then included the box itself, made a square on the box, and hit finish. Another extrude later and the lid is almost done. To finalize the lid, the error. Using the lid top, I created a new sketch. I could have done something simple such as a bunch of boxes or rectangles for the holes, but I thought it'd be fun to design something a little bit more interesting. So I came up with angled rounded rectangles. I start by creating a new sketch on top of the lid and made an angled rectangle. Then I added two arches to either side of the rectangle and trimmed off the inner edges of the rectangle. Finally, I put some constraints in, not caring too much about the specific measurements. Now that I have a sketch for the hole, I can do another extrude and add the hole to the lid, cutting through the top. With the extrude complete, I can then pattern the hole on the lid to easily create a bunch of them. I'm going to be honest, 
I've never really messed with the patterns that much, so I tinkered around with the settings till I got something satisfying and wasn't cutting into the edges or the lip of the top. With the pattern complete, the lid is done. Taking the box of the slicer, I realized the box itself doesn't need to look pretty and will save a bunch of time, particularly if I use a bigger nozzle. So I go with a one millimeter size nozzle. For the lid, I go with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle as the lip of the lid is too small for the one millimeter nozzle to print. With that, it's off to the printer. When I originally printed the boxes, I ran out of red filament on the last box. So I had to change filament halfway through the print for my white filament. Overall, they turned out well, even if the boxes were originally designed for the Ekiepin. I did reprint the box bottoms to increase the height to accommodate the rest of the decadent. When I updated the design slightly for the reprint, I rounded the corners of the hole and added a slight chamfer to the very bottom and the very top of the boxes. Rounded corners tend to prevent bloat, as the original design, I had to shave off some of the corners of the hole to get the top of it. The chamfers were also added to reduce elephants, but if you have any suggestions or want to correct me on anything, please feel free to comment. Still learning would appreciate any and all feedback. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. I try to release weekly videos of some format and try to stream at least once a week as well. Here on YouTube and other streaming platforms such as Quick, Kick, and Instagram. Have a great day and keep on making stuff.